So why on earth, again, are you trying to put neurodivergent people in a neurotypical setting? My goodness, I have never been on a successful date at a restaurant. Today I want to talk about everything that I believe is wrong with this TV show, Love on the Spectrum, um, the Netflix TV show about autistic people dating. It is a show that follows uh, neurodivergent people, but it's really a show for neurotypical people. So that is a perspective that I feel like the show is created from and being presented as, which becomes this issue every time when we talk about or showcase or highlight smaller groups in society we still do it from a neurotypical white perspective. And this also brings me to my next point, which is I think the main issue with this show. The show is like trying to make neurodivergent people, NDs, <laughs> but trying to make ND people act in the way the NT people do. And I mean, the whole point about autism is that it's so cool. Autism is something that I see as a true superpower. It makes you different. It makes you makes life harder, that's for sure. Well, it can be a really amazing thing. It can also be a really difficult thing to be autistic, of course, in this world, but it's such a cool thing because your brain functions differently. You see things clearer, I think. So that sort of bridges into my biggest issue with the show, which is the fact that this show is based on trying to make neurodivergent people act like neurotypical people. And that makes me, that makes me so sad because the whole point of being neurodivergent is that once you realize that this is how your brain works and your brain works differently from the majority of people and that there are things you can do and there are things that are harder to do, I find such immense freedom in that, in knowing that it's not my fault I can't go to work. It's not my fault I can't be around people. It's just the way my brain is. And I just have to adapt to that. And part of that also, of course, bridges to relationships we don't need to try to act like everyone else which is the neurotypical people no one needs to try to act to the, like them not even neurotypical people because most honestly most of the standards that neurotypical neurotypical people live by are really hor horrible so another issue with this show is that it's based on the premise that a relationship is the highest value uh for everyone and you can just look on the internet or look around you. A relationship isn't the highest value for everyone. So therefore, it's very silly that's being pushed as an idea. Like you need to be in a relationship. Um, so this is something that clearly is being pushed towards women. As a woman, you're not really a human unless you're in a relationship, right? But yeah, so the premise that you need to be in a relationship to be happy, obviously that's a problem with every dating show. But I think it becomes a bigger issue when we try to create this narrative that autistic people will only be happy if they're in a standard heterosexual relationship. It's like it's trying to create this narrative that everyone needs to be like the neurotypical people. Autistic people also need to be in relationships. For many autistic people, relationship is a struggle and it's not necessarily the answer to any questions. It can actually create a lot of harm being in a relationship uh, and that's true for neurotypical people too. So obviously there's a too big of an emphasis on relationship in our society and this show just contributes to that narrative. Let's leave the autistic people out of this because as an autistic person, it's easy to see through these layers of society that are fake. Like um, for example, people with Asperger's or autism aren't as attached to gender roles because they're not they're not natural, they're just, it's just fake. It's just something we're acting, right? So that's, for example, something that comes up in a relationship, especially if you're with a NT person. The second thing, which is my number one relationship tip advice, is that compromising is never a good idea. And compromising is especially not a good idea for autistic people. Now, of course, this doesn't apply to everyone. Some autistic people might prefer to compromise and not be alone. But I think that is because of the structures of society. I think there is enormous pressure to be seeking a relationship and to be seeking partnership. To be alone is one of the biggest failures, right, as a human. People might feel like they want to be with someone, but actually if they would not, if they would be free from all these constructs and structures of society, they might not want to. So yeah, compromising in a relationship as a neurodivergent person is not a good idea because ultimately it's probably going to be your compromises uh, in the sense that you're going to have to be not yourself 
or um, you're gonna have to do things you don't want to do. And ultimately, I'd like to live in a world where I don't have to do things I don't wanna do. So I've been married to my husband for three, two years? I don't know, two or three years. And um, what my favorite thing about our relationship is that he's a very weird person, So, but he's still neurotypical. We don't compromise on anything. And so there's some things he does, some things he does to help me and on the premise that I can't do them. I think that's really amazing because it really helps me in my day-to-day -day life and it helps me deal with other people and it helps me be myself. When I come home, there are no compromises. So I can behave how I want to be. Another little issue <laughs> I have with this show is why go to a restaurant? As an autistic person, people can be extremely stressful, noises, new situation, not knowing what's on the menu, not knowing what the other person is gonna eat, not knowing about what smells are gonna be in there. All these things can be extremely stressful. So why on earth, again, are you trying to put neurodivergent people in a neurotypical setting? My goodness, I have never been on a successful date at a restaurant. Me and my husband went to a temple that was our first date. It was great. But it's so silly to put these two people in a setting that's so highly stressful for and pretending that the cause of this is to help them when in actuality you're just trying to make them neuro be behave like neurotypical people, which isn't helping anyone. And one of my biggest issues with the show is that darn relationship coach. Have they gotten rid of her <laughs> for season two? Because my goodness, what is this focus on special interest? As in, like, let me ask you, as a neurotypical person, have you ever been on a date? And it's been like, oh, what movies do you like? Well, I like these movies. Let's be in a relationship. No, that is not how it works. A relationship is not based on the similar interests. A, base, a relationship based on similar interests will ultimately fail the day someone changes their interest. Having special interests is a great thing and having different special interests is an even better thing because again, just because you're in a relationship, just because you live together, doesn't mean you have to be with each other all the time. If you have similar interests or like doing the same things, then you just do them together. But your special interests don't have to match and what you like doesn't have to match. It's about principles, it's about values, it's about connection, it's about energy. I've never ever, I don't think, liked anyone who liked the same things as I do. If she can stop focusing on like neurodivergent people behaving like neurotypical people, like texting and like not being straightforward, one of the amazing things about autism is the straightforwardness because it allows for so much less confusion in a relationship. I find that's one of the health, most helpful things in my relationship. I can just say exactly how I feel. And me and my partner have a established communication where he doesn't get hurt because he doesn't take my tone of voice personally. He doesn't take um, my anything personally because it isn't personal. And also you don't wanna be with someone who takes what you say personally. So personally, I'd say the biggest questions for autistic people in a relationship, and you don't have to be in a relationship, is respect for yourself and for the other partner to make sure that their boundaries, emotions, feelings are being respected and that your boundaries in every single situation is being respected, honored, and valued. And the other thing is health or safety or well-being. So that is that your health and self's well-being has to come first at all times for you and their health and safe being, safe being well-being has to come first for them and then you have to work together to make sure that the other person is happy and healthy and safe, right? If you wanna to live together with someone. What, what's worked so well with me and my partner now is that we have the same values. Like we want the other person to be happy. That's our highest value. We want the nature around us to be beautiful. We want to be healthy. So those are all similar values that help us move forward together in the world rather than separately. We've read this book, I'm gonna put it here. I really have to read it if you wanna be in a relationship and you're neurodivergent. Uh, I had very good tips and it really taught him a lot about my behavior in our relationship. So yeah, what I wanna say is you don't have to be in a com conventional relationship. If you're neurodivergent, absolutely not. It probably isn't a good idea. Also, you might be super interested in sex. Yep, let's talk about it. You might not. So again, you don't have to be in a conventional relationship. Uh, conventional relationships are probably safer in the sense that you're not, there's a less of a risk, I guess, of being hurt, but there's a bigger chance of getting murdered if you're a woman. But yeah, you don't have to go to a restaurant, have a date. I mean, just go out and sit and sit next to each other and not talk. 
Why can't we show that in the show? Why can't we show people's own expressions? Like, what would you want to do on a date? Autism is a superpower, so utilize it. Can you please just show autistic people getting to express themselves and utilize their superpower? Like, isn't it amazing to live in a world where we're more honest and more direct and more straightforward, where we can actually have a conversation without all these layers of fakeness that neurodivert neurotypical and the societal structures put on us. And this should also be highlighted in the show because that's what it should be about. It shouldn't be about neurodivergent people trying to date like regular people and then people on the internet being like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. No, they're just humans just like you and they should be able to date in a different way where they don't have to sit at a restaurant and talk about and create small talk. I absolutely hate small talk, will not engage with it. And I absolutely do not want to engage with small talk in small talk with the partner I want to, I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. I would be so tiring if I had to have do small talk with him. I've written down that conventional relationships suck. And they do. This part of the conversation has to be voiced. And um, yes, it's ridiculous that it isn't being more voiced. And it's ridiculous that this voyeurism of watching people who are seemingly different try to behave in ways that doesn't feel good to them, that doesn't feel natural, or that doesn't feel like they're honoring their innermost truth. Because that's how I feel in every moment where I'm not being myself. I have to put on something and not, I can't be myself. I don't know how to. Autism is amazing. Non-conventional relationships are amazing. And I can honestly say that I'm happy with my partner in every single moment. And would I not have met him, I would have for sure been single for life. And I was completely set on that. I never thought I'd be in a relationship. I had decided that I was going to be single for the rest of my life. And I was happy with that. So I'd say be happy with that before you need to find the need to be someone else. And don't listen to anyone telling you you have to be in a relationship, including this silly show. And especially not if you're not neurotypical. Because, yeah, the structures of society are crazy enough as it is. So adding, like, the nuclear family into that, it's just not going to work. You should just completely live your truth and be completely unapologetic. Because why should we try to be like everyone else? I don't see the point of that. <sighs> that was everything I had to say, I think. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you liked it. I'm very passionate about this. I'm very passionate about relationships and I'm very passionate about autism. And I find it horrendous that we live in a world that doesn't bear value diversity. So let's value diversity. Let's not encourage autistic people to be like neurotypical people. And let's not encourage anyone to be in a relationship where they're not ultimately happy. Okay, bye-bye.